Hello and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, I am so excited that you chose to click the link as we're going to be praying uh, for our children today and their relationship with God. Please hold tight because today um, may not be easy uh, and it might even be a little tough for some of you. But let me encourage you, please stay to the end. Okay. now, if it is your very first time here, I welcome you. Here's what we do. We pray. We study God's word and we provide you tips to help you live your life victoriously. Now, our Bible study is held on the first day of the month at 6.33 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? And so um, that's coming up in a couple of days, and hopefully you can log on depending on where you are in the world and join us for Bible study. Um, we um, come together. I pray. I'm there live. Just come to my channel. I, I love seeing new folk uh, show up and be there with us. Okay. Now to all of my returning subscriber family, my PCF prayer closet family, all my sisters in the Lord and uh, my 13% brothers too. I want to thank y'all for coming back. I am truly, truly excited about this prayer and I'm excited about this week. This week is uh, all about praying for our children. All righty. Um, something the Lord has been has placed on my heart for several weeks now. And, and I, I, I put a survey out and y'all responded so enthusiastically. And we're going to kick off this week um, and praying for our children by focusing on their relationship with God. That was the number one concern that you all had based on the survey. It's the same for me is uh, my children. I have three for those who are new here, uh, ranging in ages uh, 10 to 16. And some of you have children that are older. Some have small children. Many of you have adult children. And so today's prayer and all week it is going to focus uh, on children of any age. You can have a 40 year old child. Um, they're still your child, even though they're not a little kid anymore. Nothing will change the fact that your mama or perhaps your daddy. <laughs> All righty. So it is for any age. Now, every week we have a scripture that we focus on. We're going to focus on Proverbs 22 and six. Train up a child. And the way he should go, even when he is old, he will not depart from it. That is our trust. Our trust is that we're training up our children in the way that they should go. So when they're old, it's not going to depart the training that we provide. Amen. Now, um, as we get ready to pray, um, I'm sharing a picture on the screen, and that is my mama. <laughs> she is absolutely gorgeous, as you can see. Um, she is um, the number one reason I am serving God today is because of my mama. And I put her picture out here for the first time because I want you all to have hope as mamas and some of you daddies that are praying for your children. Uh, let me tell you why. Although I accepted Christ into my life at age 18, away at college, uh, my roommate led me to the Lord. Y'all, I didn't start serving the Lord for five years. I, I knew I had accepted Christ, but I was still out there. I was still with a bunch of different guys. I was still not living a Christian life at all. I was heavy into hip hop culture. I was heavy into the world. I was always a good student, but I had no relationship with God and no desire to have a relationship with God, to be honest with you. So I started my career after college in New York City um, all by myself with $1,600 in my pocket from selling my car. And um, my mom had gotten, um, had really radically recommitted her life to the Lord. We grew up not as Christians. We grew up trying, she tried a bunch of different religions, which is a whole nother story another day from Jehovah's Witness to Black Israelites. We did, we tried a bunch. 
when I was a little girl. But my mama got radically, she radically recommitted her life to the Lord. And uh, she used to always talk to me about the Lord when I was just out there in the world, y'all. Again, I'm like many of your children. I was a young adult, didn't want Jesus, didn't care about Jesus. Well, my mom uh, used to send me a little bit of money. She didn't have a lot uh, when I first moved to New York. And she would say, Kim Yetta, uh, uh, I'm going to send you, I'll send you $20 if you would go to church on Sunday. And I said, okay, because I was broke. I'll go to church for 20 bucks. You got a deal. <laughs> so this was before Cash App. This was before Venmo and PayPal, honey. This was years ago. I would wait to get that $20 in the mail. And then the following Sunday, I just go to church just because I want to keep my word. But let me tell y'all, and this is important. And this might be the hard part that I mentioned. Listen carefully. And what I'm about to say may or may not apply to all of you. Okay, so listen carefully If this is something you need um, to search your heart about, listen to this. It wasn't uh, because my mom was, quote unquote, kind of bribing me. It wasn't some miraculous sermon that got me to recommit my to really commit to Jesus at age 23, 24 ish. Um, What did it was my mother's transformation. My mother became so different. My mother was the representation, hallelujah, of what godliness was. I didn't have a real concept of God. And y'all, some of your, your children don't. My sister and I just had a conversation about this. Young people, little kids, unless you have a special child who God has placed his hand on that child and they get God right away, You all, your kids may not have a real, palpable, tangible understanding of salvation and Jesus Christ. They may not. They may see God as um, someone that y'all pray to at breakfast or lunch or dinner. Or God is just, uh, God is good and and God is why we go to church. and, And God is this big, big man in the sky. But they, for the most part, I bet you they don't. Well, my mother became a representation of what God can do in a person. Her change. She was always a wonderful person, but she got on fire for Jesus. She began to um, walk and talk and act differently than people in the world. And so my sister recommitted her life, gave her life to the Lord next. And then I was blown away at the two of them. My mother would speak scripture. My mother would pray over me. My mother would encourage me differently, even though she always did growing up. But there was a difference in her so much that I wanted what she had. Oh, Jesus, y'all get this. I wanted the Jesus she was serving. I, 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 I had, I was doing all right in New York city as a young person living it up, dating different guys, especially the stockbroker I told y'all about, but she had such a deep, wonderful relationship with Jesus. And I saw the fruit in her life that I wanted it. So y'all, this is where it gets hard. Do your children want the God you serve? Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, y'all, I need to pray, but I got to tell the truth. I got to tell the truth. Are you still acting like people in the world? Are you still cussing and drinking and smoking and and gossiping? Are you still so um, much like the world? Are you still, you know, are the people in the church? What if you've been at the same church for years and your young adult child or your teenagers see that the, everybody, there's no Jesus in the church? There's no God there. There's no spirit of God in the church you go to. And you want your child to serve a God where Jesus ain't even present? Come on. You got to think about it. Wait a minute. My kids may not get God, 
but I want my kid to get the fruit. This does not mean act self-righteously towards your children. This doesn't mean throw the Bible at them because my mother didn't throw the Bible at me. She didn't do that. She was love personified glory. She glorified God through her super loving behavior, but her actions. She was so different. She was no longer dating. I mean, think about it. I want to think about it. Think about it. If you got a friend, a quote unquote friend, that's been a friend that you sleep with on and off every now and then, or you date, but you go to church on Sunday and you want your kid to get saved, but your daughter see your daughter see that you, 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 you know, you got the same friend that you've had for 20 years. Come on now. Your kids have to see that, wait a minute, God is real in their life. God is real. What if you're struggling and struggling and struggling financially for 30 years? Why, why are your kids going to serve a God that they mama can't even hardly pay rent? Come on, y'all. I told y'all this was going to be hard. Think about it. Why, why is your, your teenage son is struggling with, should he go sell drugs? Should he hang with drug dealers? And, 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 and he, think about it. Why is he going to serve a God where his mom can't even pay the bills? I'm not saying that Jesus calls us all to be rich. You all know my, but who've been with me for a while. Y'all know how, what I believe about that stuff, but I'm just trying to tell you the truth. It is. Let me see if my life Not perfection. Don't think I'm saying you got to be perfect because we're not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. And so we want our life to be a representation of that. Do your kids see you praising the Lord at home? Do your kids see you get down on your knees and pray for them? Do you pray with them? Do you tell them, uh, do you speak to them and tell them, you know what God laid on my heart? God just wanted me to tell you how much I love you today, baby. All right, you can go on about your business now. Listen to me. I'm telling y'all. You know, my my son gave my husband and I an an amazing compliment, and he didn't even try to because I got teenage boys, and they don't want to compliment nobody about nothing. They not spiritual about nothing. They don't care about nothing but video games. Please don't think my kids are so holy on the holy cloud and my kids are so this or that. They're not. They are regular kids. But my husband and I are determined to keep putting the word in them and to keep showing them a godly lifestyle and a godly marriage. Well, my my 16 year old said to us one time, a few times he's complimented us without us even him knowing it. He said one day, you know, mom. He was talking about somebody getting a divorce that he knows. He said, Mom, you know, I could never see you and dad get a divorce. I said, well, why do you say that? He said, because y'all love God so much. He said, you and dad love God more than anybody loves God. Like he said, Mom, you don't you don't never want to disappoint God. So I I can't see you. That made me feel so good. He calls us Christian Christian. He said, Mom, there are people that are Christians but you and dad, y'all Christian, Christian. And I said, what's Christian, Christian? He said, Christian, Christian is you just want to, you want to live for God and you want to be right before God. And you, he was saying this stuff that he didn't even realize. I was like, yeah, we want him to know. And we want him to know we can have a good life as Christians. We want him to enjoy his life and enjoy the vacations and enjoy stuff. So the junk in the world is not enticing to him where he can say, man, my parents had an awesome marriage. They had an awesome relationship with God. They serve people. They love people. So you got to get before God and say, God, help me glorify and personify you to my children. So my children will want you. See, y'all didn't know this is the direction I was going in. So I am going to pray that we are reflections of Christ in their lives and that our children will want Jesus. They'll want him. Y'all, during my prayer time, before I turned on my phone, the Lord gave me the date one year. As I was praying for y'all's children, I asked the Lord, 
or the Lord just dropped it in my spirit and it just came out one year. That within one year of today, that everybody listening to me, I'm declaring their children will start serving God. Doesn't mean their children won't be a mess still and won't be on social media and won't be doing different things. But their children, their children's relationship, your children's relationship will be one, two, three steps better within one year. Come on, y'all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you and I praise you and I lift you up and I magnify your precious holy name. There is absolutely no God like Jehovah. There is no God like you, Lord. And for that reason, I praise you and I glorify you. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to pray for the children represented here today. Father, I lift up every single mama and daddy that is still right here listening to this prayer. God, you know the cry of their heart. You know the children, Father God, represented. It doesn't matter whether their children are one or 50 years old. I'm praying for their children to not only get saved, but then set free and delivered and filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm praying for their children to have deep personal relationships with you, Lord. I come against all thinking that is erratic or wrong. The perceptions these children may have that don't belong to you, Lord. So I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, for mighty revelation for each and every parent represented. Reveal to each parent any and all things they are doing in their lives that does not glorify you. I'm praying, Lord Jesus, that these parents will be a true reflection of what you are, Lord Jesus. Let the children represented here begin to have an insatiable desire for a walk with you. Let every mama, let every dad, let every grandparent walk uprightly, but not self-righteously. Father, it's not your will for these kids to perish. So use us, Lord Jesus, in their lives, God. Give us wisdom. Give us supernatural insight, Father God, on how to pray differently for them and with them. Show us open doors, Lord Jesus, to insert the gospel in their lives. Father, if there are parents that are at the wrong churches, Lord, guide them to the place they're supposed to be. A place that will minister to them spirit, soul, and body. A place that will have a great landing place for their kids to walk and get cultivated in the things of God. Lord, let their children within one year, within one year, have a deeper walk with you, Father. I am praying that these parents won't grow weary They'll be inspired. They'll be encouraged today. So if there's any junk permeating in their lives, if there's anything that they need to get rid of, if there's anything they need to drop, if there's anything they need to do in order to glorify you, help them to do it. Help them to do it. Help them to sacrifice for the sake of their children. Help them, Lord. Help them, Father. Give every single parent a spirit of wisdom, Lord Jesus. We, the Bible tells us if we lack wisdom, all we got to do is ask and you'll not only give it to us, but you'll lavish the wisdom on us, God. So, Lord, we are crying out to you right now, God. We don't want our children in the world serving the devil. We don't want our children following the junk in the world. We don't want our daughters to get pregnant out of wedlock. We don't want our sons to impregnate girls. We don't want our sons in jail. We don't want our sons on the street corner. We don't want to lose our kids to the streets. We don't want our kids worshiping social media. We want our kids worshiping the one true and holy God. And that is you Lord and so father we need you right now Lord Jesus and we're willing to sacrifice whatever we got to sacrifice on their behalf to do it hallelujah 
Hallelujah. And so we're praying over our kids today, Lord Jesus. And we're thanking you, Father God, that this will be a breakthrough year in their walk with you. For our children, for grandchildren, Lord. We won't let them be snatched up by the world. We won't let, they don't have to be 30, 40, 50 and then start serving you. God, they can start serving you as little kids. So touch their hearts over this next year. Touch their hearts, Lord Jesus. Do whatever it is you got to do in order to save them and set them free and put them on the course that you have for them. That their children want you and a relationship with you. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Well, um, I just want to thank y'all so much for joining me. Um, Listen, I I normally don't have 20 minute prayers. I just looked at the time. Um, If you're new, please know this is not the standard, uh, but this is a, a Holy Spirit led channel. And even though I normally have, you know, eight, nine, 10 minute prayers, you know, somewhere around in there. We flow by the spirit of God. And I truly believe that if you're still listening, God has something for you. He has something for your kids. Um, I know that's me and my husband's greatest desire is to see all three of our children serving God. And, and we're already praying for their spouses. We're praying for the people that they date. We're praying for all of that. But we also are making sure that our lives are in alignment with Jesus. Now, please don't be condemned by this. Do you hear me? Don't be condemned because that, if you feel condemned, that's not, that's not the spirit of God. Uh, Satan condemns you. Christ convicts you. Okay. So if you know that, you know what? All I do is yell at my kids. That is not a representation of Christ. Think about it. Let me give y'all an example. Christ gives us grace. Are you showing grace to your kids? But Christ is also a disciplinarian. Are you disciplining them with grace? Or are you one of those parents that just tell your children yes to everything? And it can be your young adult children. I know people like that. And it cripples them. Now, again, as I mentioned before, maybe this won't apply to everyone because there are some of you that can honestly say, Kim Yetta, I am living a godly, godly lifestyle as far as I know, but my children still don't serve God. That is perfectly fine. Don't give up on your prayers then. If you're already uh, exemplifying who God is, then there's nothing wrong. You keep on going, okay? Um, I feel so good this morning. I really, really do. I I believe we're going to get some mighty testimonies. I truly, truly believe it. Um, I just believe it. I can't put it into words, but I know the Lord ordained this day, even though the prayer is long, um, but I know it. Um, don't give up, okay? You pray. Pray for your God to give you revelation. Pray over your kids. Don't judge them. Don't judge them. Don't beat them up with scripture. Uh, but you do little things that kind of shock them. Um, the Lord gives you something, speaks to you about your kids. We've done that. I love y'all. Don't be condemned. Have a Holy Ghost conviction. Um, y'all have a great day, okay? And I'll be back tomorrow, the Lord willing.